Hello, I'm Dal Bartling, and I certainly hope that you and yours are enjoying that sunnier, warmer day. Well, I'm thinking of a word, and I'm thinking the word maybe should be more in our use and our application of it as a verb than a noun, kind of like the word love. This word is appreciation. Yeah, I was thinking about appreciation. Because, you know, the older I am, the more that I think. So I had time to think about appreciation. And how do you give appreciation? And how do you receive appreciation? There are certain personality traits, and in different studies, they seem to put the studies in maybe four different categories where a personality could maybe be an analytical or an aimable or a, um, a driving type personality or an expressive. And we all probably can pinpoint certain individuals that we know or even leaders that maybe fall in those different personality uh, traits there. Well, there's been another study and this study is upon appreciation specifically in the workplace. It was done by a gentleman by the name of Dr. Gary Chapman. Now, you may know of him that he wrote a book, a bestseller called The Five Love Languages. Well, kind of an offshoot of that is then this book of the languages of appreciation in the workplace. Let's look at some of those and reflect upon, again, how do I give and how do I receive? And is there a certain comfort zone that I seem to fall into many times, uh, you know, percentage-wise? First one being quality time. So the category, quality time. Now, people who love quality time appreciate that deep one-on-one -on -one time. And this can be hard to achieve, of course, in our workplace, workplace of today, where there are quick meetings and, you know, uh, water cooler type conversations, and of course, being remote. But to connect better with those people, you need to set aside that one-on-one -on -one where you can touch base with them and give them your full attention. That is the key your undivided attention. I, I used a, a phrase that when I would have policyholders that would come in that I needed to spend time with at the reception uh, desk when the receptionist Sandra said that they had arrived, I would go out and greet them. And I would make a note to tell Sandra, Sandra, could you please hold all my calls as I spend time here with Mr. Jones? And I said it loud enough that Mr. Jones could hear. It, I think, set the stage for us to spend that time together. And he was in more of a comfortable uh, mood, if you want to say. Because sometimes they weren't in the best of mood. Quality time. There was one time in which we had 15 associates that I was directly responsible for. So I had to spend some quality time. I needed to, I wanted to, because I understood as I was doing the touch base with them, that's how we could then collectively do better and reach our goals. And as I was touching base with them, I was looking for the best, looking for examples that I could immediately give them the gratitude that I appreciate them. And so here's an example of back in 1992, on my calendar. And you can see from my calendar, it's pretty full. But I would make a point to meet with those people at least twice a week that I would be meeting with them. Called them PRPs, okay? Plan and review and perception. What we perceive is forthcoming. Plan, review, and perception. Quality time. Number one. So 
Do you give or do you like to receive quality time? Consider that one. The next one I say is gifts. Gifts. And <clears throat> these type of people, they love giving and receiving gifts. You could pick up a little trinket at the store, uh, buy them their favorite candies, create a handmade gift. Monetary is not, not important to them. The people who like to be appreciated with gifts or give gifts, monetary uh, means is, is not a, a thing there. But what you need to do is individualize it, make it special for them. Sometimes you might think, well, that's kind of hard to do. Well, let me give you a fast example I did very recently here uh, in showing appreciation. Collectively, with my associates here, I gave them a gift. Now, I could have easily ordered a box of maybe Omaha steaks to be sent to all of them, but I didn't do that. Instead, I used uh, an organization called Gold Belly, in which they could go across the United States and use their gift card to choose individualized on what they eat, when they want, for the whole family or whoever, and exercise their gift card. Uh, we had one that ordered some special, special steaks. Another one told me they ordered seafood that isn't so prevalent here in South Dakota. I think the main point of the gift is not again the monetary amount, but Try to individualize it and look for ways to do that very, very thing. Okay. Quality time. Do you like to give or receive? Gifts. Do you like to give or receive? Now we move on to acts of service. People who love acts of service, they like to do things for others and enjoy others doing things for them. And a lot of times those are just random things. Uh, one of the easiest ways to fulfill this uh appreciation language is to complete a task for someone and it doesn't need to be a big task maybe it's stapling maybe it's putting things together for a, a meeting or something like that just little things it can be anything from printing out a, a document to you know tackling an objective that they were trying to achieve or when you hear something uh maybe of a particular topic that they are interested in what can you find on that topic and give them uh, more information to do that. Acts of, of service. I recently received acts of service. Uh, an associate here knew that I was barking and getting over this this uh, cold or whatever it is. And he especially did the act of service of he went to Amazon and from Amazon he ordered some that he his family uses some of this very high potent vitamin C supplement. And he got that and he didn't have it on hand, so he ordered it. He ordered it for me. Acts of service, random acts of service. So we have the languages of appreciation so far of quality time, gifts, acts of service. And now we have words of affirmation. People who love words of affirmation, they love to hear that they've done well and they love sometimes some love to hear it in front of others but they love their name they love that affirmation that you did good now you can send this in a thank you maybe a handwritten thank you you could do it in an email you could text them indeed you could tell them in person or you could leave a nice comment on LinkedIn. I hadn't thought of LinkedIn in giving those comments. I'm going to use that one. Words of affirmation. So we have the languages of appreciation in the workplace, quality time, gifts, acts of service, and words of affirmation. There is another one. And of course, there is a caution if you will, in today's society, that is physical touch. Now that could be in the form of a handshake, it'd be a fist bump. You know, you can do a handshake when you first meet the person and you can do a handshake every time that you see the person 
and maybe when you're uh, leaving the person. I like to give a handshake and use my other hand, use both my hands to give a handshake here. Now, when you do so, uh, that person that likes the physical touch, there's a certain amount of chemicals that they receive in that, th that touch and it gives them that good, good feeling. Again, in giving and receiving. You know, they've actually done studies too, where you can maintain physical touch just by maintaining good eye contact. So when you're on a Zoom call, are you looking right at the person when you're listening to them on what they're saying? Are you looking right into the lens? It's a good way to give some physical touch of appreciation. So there we have the language of appreciation and different categories. Which one do you like to give and receive? Do your observations on people around you, particularly in the workplace, and you can kind of pick up on which ones they like. Quality time, gifts, acts of service, words of affirmation, physical touch. It'll make right at work a sunnier, warmer place. Indeed it will. So you go out there and enjoy yourself and remember this. I'm rooting for you. Indeed I am. And I want you to know this. I sincerely do appreciate you. You know, we've been doing this for a few years and we have well over 500 plus people that take the time to listen to a sunny or warmer day. Folks, I do appreciate that. And like I say, I appreciate you. Because you know what? We're in this together. And blessed are they who ease the pain of misfortune, for they shall be called insurance agents. You take care. <laughs>